When I bought the boat, it came with this little 10 watt NASA solar panel. I have no idea how much it actually produces uh, or whether it's even working. So my plan is to fit this uh, Victron charge controller with a, a Bluetooth module. Hopefully it will tell me how much I'm using, how much I'm making and whether and how to upgrade the entire system. Until recently, the only electronics on the boat were this NASA Clipper Duet log and depth unit and a masthead light, neither of which took much current at all, absolutely no power requirements. And I strongly suspect that a fully charged uh, lead acid leisure battery at the start of the season would have kept them going um, with no input whatsoever for a couple of months. Since then, I've added a few things like a fixed VHF radio, charging for loads of little electronic devices, and also the wiring for a, a tiller pilot. And that, together with plans for some more extended cruising this summer, I think my power requirements are going to increase somewhat. As part of the rewiring this winter, I had fitted uh, quite an inexpensive little solar charge controller, which I'm sure is doing a marvellous job, but doesn't really give me the information I need. So I'm replacing it with this more sophisticated Victron charge controller, which has a, a Bluetooth module which connects to an app on my phone or tablet. And I'm hoping that this is going to give me some more information. Basically, I want to know how much power I'm using, how much is going in, and also uh, how much capacity I therefore need. This unit is actually the smallest one that Victron uh, make. It's the 7510. The 75 refers to the maximum photovoltaic voltage you've got, basically the, the voltage of your solar panel. And the 10 is the maximum current you can push through it. Realistically, this means uh, for a small 12 volt system, you can have up to 143 watts in your solar array. The load current uh, that this will handle is 15 amps, which should be also be more than enough for what I need to do. You just then wire it to the battery and connect via Bluetooth to the tablet app. And it goes into a firmware update. Uh, these firmware updates are shipped with the application, so you don't actually have to be on the internet to do it, which is handy. Once it's updated, you can configure the battery. Now, it, there doesn't seem to be a preset for a standard lead acid leisure 12 volt battery. The default battery type seems to be a gel deep discharge unit. But the numbers look more or less what I was expecting, so I've just kept it at that. After wiring the load into the distribution switch panel, I can now wire up the solar panel and see what it's doing. So back to the app, and hey look, we've got some power coming out of the solar panel. I mean, nominally it's 10 watts, and we're getting, well, one here, but going up to four, three, four, five watts. It's about five o'clock, it's a fairly sunny day, uh, early May, but there's quite a bit of cloud cover, and we've got a, a reliable two to three milliamps trickling out of there. I am not dissatisfied with this. I think that um, little NASA 10 watt is doing its job. So let's have a look at some of the power that we're using. Turn on the depth sounder and not surprisingly, it doesn't even show up. It's drawing far less than 100 milliamps. Turn on the VHF and uh, as a little bit worrying, it's not showing anything. That's before I realized it was off on the unit. So turn it on on the unit 
and it's drawing three to four hundred milliamps. So 0.4 of an amp, the manual says it should take half an amp, so that seems reasonable. Turn on the mast headlamp, and uh, it's taking between 1 and 2 milliamps, so not much there. And entirely expected draw. By far the biggest power, by far the biggest current draw is the radio on transmit. The manual says it should be 5 amps. Let's try it and we're getting we're getting about three three point seven to four amps on there. So that's seems reasonable. Of course that current draws for a really quite short amount of time. We don't spend a, a lot of time talking on the radio and transmit. So it would appear that on an average normal day in May, with the instruments on and the radio on, that the solar panel is just about keeping up with the power demands. That's interesting. But one of the things I really wanted to look at was the effect of partial shading on the power output of these panels. But 6 watts here on the following day doesn't take very much shade. Just a couple of those cells to be covered and that power output drops really quite dramatically. You would realistically expect that if you covered half the panel you'd get half the power but it's nowhere near that absolutely 50% of the panel drops the power by a factor of five or six at least I actually get more energy out of this panel on a cloudy day than on a bright sunny day with some partial shading these Victron units also data log, they collect all of the data for the last 30 days. So in a month or so's time, I should have a far better idea about what's actually happening and can start to make some decisions about what I need to do. So the system as it is copes uh, reasonably okay with day sailing and with a, a couple of days away, a weekend maybe. As long as it has a few days to recharge and recoup afterwards. So what do I do for extended cruising? Do I get a bigger solar panel? Do I put a, an extra battery in? Do I buy one of those DC power banks? Do I do something else or a combination of everything? Your thoughts and ideas would be very much appreciated. Thank you very much in anticipation. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.